Hey, I'm Vulture Culture, and this is the Roland D50 Linear Arithmetic Synthesizer from 1987. And we've also got the Roland PG-1000 here, Programmer, which came out at the same time. But what's most important to it is we have this awesome Hypersynth H-Card 750. So we're going to be checking this out tonight. And I bought this because I wanted to make my own sounds for the Roland D50. And you can do that with this because it's got 64 blank banks, or I'm sorry, almost 64 blank banks, uh, but it's got 12, 12 banks that actually do come with sounds. And those sounds are really neat. It's broken into a bunch of different categories. They've got brass sounds, all sorts of things, soundscapes and pads. What I was most interested in was whether or not the Roland D50 can actually sound like an analog synthesizer. So this actually has two banks in it that are dedicated to analog sounds. And I thought, why don't we go through them? And that's patch or that's bank eight and nine. And uh, so, for instance, I have one of these Roland D50 memory cards from the 80s here. And one of these guys has 64 patches on it. And this is the piano patches, which are duplicated on the H card. But there's all these other hidden patches that come from back then that people don't know about that we can actually use on a roll on a Roland D50 and get access to these sounds. So it's really exciting for me because these are a lot of really cool sounds and maybe a different presentation of the Roland D50 uh, than maybe you've heard before. Um, so anyways, we're going to hit the card button and then one one. And you can see the first patch from the first bank of the analog uh, section is called Moog Solo, and we'll check it out. And you can hear, of course, that the aftertouch is working on this synthesizer, which is always a plus for a synthesizer from the 80s. And by the way, guys, I am Vulture Culture, and we check out a different synthesizer, uh, mostly vintage, sometimes new, um, every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So definitely check that out. Uh, Mapache, welcome to the stream. How's everything going? Um, yes, so let's check out Transpad Solo here. So it is very, very cool to be checking out. What is that in the background? You guys hear that? It's still like going. Wow, there's like a really long sustained note deep there. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Let me know if you can hear that. Can you hear that chord back there? Really cool. Um, I actually don't know exactly what linear arithmetic means uh, or where the name was derived from. Um, I know it was the CEO of Roland that came up with it and... It is uh, essentially Roland's digital synthesis. So this synthesizer is completely digital. However, it does sound kind of warm and beautiful in a way that even the more expensive JD-8000 doesn't. Of course, you can hear in the tail there, the sort of digital brittle sort of sound to it. Um, does everybody can hear things? Uh, is everything good, guys? Can you guys hear Vulture Mom?
This one's called Atmos Solo. And you get that like high harmonic there as you hold down the aftertouch. Really uh, kind of fun to maybe use that over that. Uh, oh, you just couldn't hear what I was hearing. I get that. Okay, cool. I was uh, panicking because we didn't have audio earlier at the beginning of the stream. So this one's called Gibson USA. Wow. So that uses the aftertouch to be able to bend up. That is uh, pretty insane. Wow, just crazy how much of a bend that is. And I wonder if on a lead, like... Yeah, definitely... Uh... Yeah, I was going to say, if you guys go back and listen to that you will and turn the volume up, you'll definitely be able to hear it. It wasn't like some sort of audiophile little thing because I've got good headphones on. It was just very, very quiet. Wow, this is crazy. I've never really thought about how useful it would be to route aftertouch to the pitch. I know that seems stupid because there's only really like three basic things you could route aftertouch to, but... But that sort of makes it feel like a real guitar, you know? So I, I played guitar, not keyboards growing up, if that's not obvious to you guys. So it's cool. Uh, Cassiopeia Mix. Let's try this one out. I checked this one out before the stream. I really like this one. Isn't that just sort of beautiful in its own little way? And again, there was a little bit of like actually detune to the pitch on the aftertouch there. Slap back Calliope. really cool sorts of sounds. I'm going to try to run through some of these moderately quickly. Um, can you tweak these patches in real time with the controller? Yes, you can. I have not mastered the PG-1000 yet, but uh, I probably could show you pretty quickly. So this one's called Analog Wire. Let's check this out. All right, cool. Uh, so if I play a chord here, You can see right now it's choosing different structure numbers. I don't know how, how well you can see that on the stream itself. Um, you see I've now changed it to a sort of marimba sound. Now what's interesting about this is when I was actually programming my own patches, like the cutoff here was what I was selecting. Um, let's see if I can do this and control the... Yeah, there we go. So if I reload this patch and then you can hear that I've now lowered the cutoff. If we wanted to do that. So by selecting all of those, now I'm controlling the cutoff. I could increase the resonance. Uh, 
Um, now, what I don't know if you can do is like filter sweeps or something like that. I think it might be more like uh, the on in Sonic SQ80, where as you program, um, you have to re-trigger a key before you hear the difference. So to demonstrate that real quick, if I hold this note and move the cutoff, nothing's happening. But if I tap the note, you'll be able to hear the difference. Yes, you do have to trigger for editing, it would appear. Anyways, this patch is called Pulse Control. Now this patch is really cool, really neat, very modern sounding, really. You could absolutely use that for some sort of trance nowadays, but it's got that wonderful sort of 80s bit crushed grittiness to it. Yeah, really beautiful, really cool sorts of sounds. Um, some of these don't necessarily sound like analog to me, but you guys let me know what you think. Wow. Wow, this one is really beautiful. Awesome. Isn't that just gorgeous? Hey, welcome to the stream, Japanese characters. Uh, so musical the aftertouch is. Yes, I agree. It's just, it's awesome what can be that done here. Yo, yo, yo! Bitch. Anonymous with the $6.66 donation. Let me see what it says real quick. Here's to some more patches in 2023. VC in 23. Thank you very much. And by the way, guys, Happy New Year. I won't see you guys again until it is 2023. So, really awesome. And just thank you for being part of the Scum family. So glorious. Oh my god. There's nothing that sounds better than a D50, in my opinion. Uh, for whatever reason. Analog Digital, it's all about what gets the job done. Machina, welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? Happy New Year, guys. Poppy Analog. Double Moog. To me, that to my ears is a little too bright to be convincingly analog. It does uh, sound mogey, but not analog in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. The filter sounds really good in this patch. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? To me, we're much more in the analog territory with this sort of, you know, chorusy.
Yeah, it's funny to me where there's like this sort of sweep spot, sweet spot when it comes to uh, digital filters because. You know, as soon as we get to the JP8000, for me, the filter doesn't do it anymore. I'm no longer, it sounds like a less good quality VST. But when you go all the way back 10 years before, the filter sounded really, really like not good, but in a great way, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so here's this patch. Uninvited guests. A little bit more of a string sound to a classic Fantasia sort of. Almost have like uh, sort of an analog brass thing going on. Good, good, good. All right, moving on to here, we've got Power Synth. Analog wire. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Bright wave. This one's interesting because you sort of got like a little DX7 electric piano sound on the front. Let's see if I can control that um, just with the keyboard here. Yeah, you can hear we've got just this little itty bitty sound. And then over here we've got this digital analog brass thing. Yeah, cool. Synthium here. I love the aftertouch on the D50. It's just so much fun to play. A um, little bit more volume. I can do that. There's a lot more volume. How about that? Sweet Dreamer. Oh, uh, this is... Um, oh, I forgot how to play it. Something like that. Yeah, something, yeah. Yeah, that's that thing. Hey, hey, what's up, Neil? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Long time scum in the house. Spaceman on Earth, how's it going? Ah, James Davis, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, that's the sweet dream sound. That's pretty cool. Um, so, moving on. We've got Insonic... GA9, so that's interesting, like, so G, GA9, what would that be in terms of chords?
I wonder if that's supposed to be like an SQ80 type of a sound. It kind of reminds me of the brass from the SQ80. Interesting. Synthex 1. First few keys, Happy New Year coming up. Happy New Year to you too, my friend. Does anybody have any good New Year's Eve plans? I'll be working. <laughs> cool sort of sound uh this it's called prophet star five Crazy. It says wait long enough here over on the upper and lower partials, which is interesting that you got these weird sounds that come in later. Really neat. Um, yes, the wave station below, of course, uh, old friend of mine. Uh, really the other, in my opinion, king of, uh, you know, digital synths. Yeah. Yeah, love me some uh, wave station action. The Moog Modular Prophet 8, or P8, sorry, not a prophet. You know, it is actually pretty crazy how, um, how good the filter sounds. For being what it is, you know, a digital oscillator or a digital synth. Pretty sure Umatsu wrote the FF7 City of the Ancients theme on a D50. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Remember seeing that on an interview a while back. Pity the PlayStation 1 sound chip couldn't compete with a D50. John Michael Gier used the D50 a lot on his Revolutions album. Hey, Sebastian, how's it going, man? Um... Yeah, some of these analog patches are trying to do too much. I mean, it's an interesting thing, too, because they're sort of a uh, a piece of time where, despite the fact that, you know, these are analog patches, they are still trying to utilize all of the extra features of the D50. This one's Vulcan Bass. It's pretty crazy how intense that filter can actually be. Um, definitely kind of like just really kind of squelchy in a nice way. Slutty. Uh, breathy pad this one's called scotty's heaven i believe whoever was the maker of this sound bank must have been a star trek fan 
fuck that was loud. Sorry, guys. Fucking shit. that patch can absolutely rip anybody's skull apart oh my god yeah the vulcan bass was awesome that's probably one of my favorites so far really grimy sort of sound warbler solo wow i, I love how it like pitch bends on the release there uh, two dubs point it does sort of do too much you know you've got this what sounds like square wave lfo modulation you hear that like to me uh you know what is it a, a, an akai x60 can do that not that many other analog synths Interesting. Scotty's heaven, your hell. This one's called Analog Fat Hit, and uh, does have some fatness in the low end. But it's still like a little too digitally bright, if that makes any sense, you know? There is like a, something that gives that away. Analog Blast. Let's try. Analog shop. Fat synth. There we go. We've got finally got like a nice brassy type sound. definitely use that uh obx fat let's <laughs> i hate it when you put oberheim in the patch name because it just always lets down well actually it doesn't sound too bad terrible not a terrible oberheim sound it's a little bit there uh maybe not 100 this one's called fattest the fake reverb definitely hurts this one you get those like sort of metallic sounds to it, which is a little frustrating, but otherwise pretty good. Bright fat.
very middle mid-range scoop type sound. I could do it. Fat candy. Polly Horns. Ooh, like this one a lot. Really got to put some force into the aftertouch there, but pretty good. All right, so moving on, we will jump on to Polysynth 1. We're getting some patches that are starting to sound more analog, right? I'm interested, what do you guys think so far? Is the D50 sounding analog or is it still sounding like a D50? Would you guys be fooled by this? I'm, uh, I'm not convinced I would be. Power synth again. So it's called Anna Squares. Happy birthday to Anna in the chat. I think it sounds great. Yeah, I do think it sounds pretty good. I think the filter gives the uh, digital aspect away a lot. I agree with that. But it's surprising to me. That one definitely sounds digital. Rounds harps a hit. A little bit of that action here. Sounds digital, but good in the hardware sort of way. Although some processing tape tube, it would definitely be quite analog-ish. Yeah, definitely, I mean, Right now, we're just hearing this with no effects whatsoever. If we were to hear this with, uh, you know, some Fab Filter, Fab Filter Saturn on it. Not terrible. Definitely not terrible. Definitely, you can hear in the way that the oscillators phase a certain amount of digital character, too, here on this one in particular. So this one's called Synthy Organ, and you can hear how it's using the filter resonance as a way to sort of... Uh, fake extra harmonics which would be a common thing for uh analog sense to get those organ type sounds this one's called anna pop it's interesting Yeah, pretty, pretty actually kind of cool little uh, sound. Analog horns. Ooh. Does it sound analog? I don't know. Does it sound good though?
Really like that one. That one's really cool. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, agree on Saturn. Have to upgrade mine. Big fan. The new Transformer algorithm in Saturn 2 is very good. I want to change my name now. All right, Majestic. Not very majestic off the right. Oh, it's almost like an e-piano. Interesting. Voxy sound. To me, now we have really gone into digital, right? Right. Fatsy one time. Matrix synth. Very digital synth sounds to me. Oh, this one's cool. All right, I want to control. Now we have just this little tine here. Interesting little sample they have at the beginning there. Uh, sync synth. Synth. And then we can just go up here and tap this button, hit card again, and now we have a whole new load of patches. And what's so cool about this is it's like it's got shit for days, and that was some really useful stuff. I noticed with the analog set too that we have um, maybe more direct stuff. So here's this thing. This says 303 clone one. Two. Three. So what do you guys think real quick off of those 303 sounds? Does this uh, at all sound like a 303? Been unproductive as late. Volcano 3. What is Volcano 3? I don't have... All, actually, the only Fab Filter plugin I have is Saturn. And I think it's because Sebastian Comor said that he liked it uh, way back in the day. And so I was like, all right, I gotta get it. Uh, this one says Velocity Pulse Width Modulation. Wow, so depending on how hard you hit the key, so... You can get all sorts of different uh, Pulse Width Mod. So if I play kind of hard, you know, you could get... And if I play quietly... 
pretty, pretty good. Uh, not like mine, but it's not at all like a 303. I agree with that. I, I, I don't think that's really where it's at. I really like how you can hear that um, sort of gritty bit crush sound in there. Honestly, the filter does not sound bad. I don't understand why this filter sounds so good and later Roland synths don't sound as good to my ears. Um, so where do you buy patches or do you plan on creating your own? So the patches on this come with the Hypersynth H card 750. So they're just already on there. Uh, truthfully, you can download a lot of patches off the internet and just MIDI them into your, like sysx them into your D50. You could also buy these memory cards from the 80s, but the problem with these is they fail over time and they only have 64 patches on them and that's not as good uh, for making your own sounds. And I actually bought the H card so that I could make my own stuff. I'm planning on recording soon an actual sort of like using the manual and going through like a tutorial on how to program the Roland D50 um, which would apply also, by the way, for the Roland Cloud and the Roland reissue, the Boutique D05, all of that stuff, the VST, System 8, uh, Juno X and Jupiter X uh, plug out versions of the Roland D50. But I want to do a tutorial on it with the PG1000. And so I bought the card so I could do that. So by recording, uh, by going through the whole process of learning how to make sounds, uh, hopefully get good at that. <laughs> so that would be a lot of fun. Pretty uh, vowel-y. Wow, that's, so the aftertouch pitch bend is pretty crazy. <laughs> Acid four. Ooh, that one's awesome. That, uh, that was actually pretty sick. Um, super rave. I didn't like some of these patches. I checked some of these out before. Sort of your obligatory two saws beating against each other. I don't know. It could definitely be useful in like some like dark techno type stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely interesting. Um, I love how tight the low end sounds on the D50. Yeah, there's just something about it. I don't know if it's the EQ or what that defines the low end character of this synth. And what's funny is, is when we did the comparison shootout with the JD800, which costs roughly three to four times as much as you can get a D50 sometimes, I'm thinking. Um, I have to say, I kind of like the sound of the D50 better, which is, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow when you've already paid for something like that. But the truth is, is there's just something magical about this little era that I think Roland got away from because they were competing with synths like the Korg M1 and all of those workstations. So it became less about like how good the individual synth components sound, like the filter and the oscillators and the effects. I mean, it became more about like, how's the piano sound and you know how many different types of sounds could you get in there uh could it do vocals could it do you know or vocal pads could it do all these other things and you know i don't know
Warmatic. That one's really great. Trance wall. This is the one that I started the uh, the the stream off with. Hey, now partners video welcome to the stream how's it going i'm vulture culture and uh we do something like this every wednesday at nine i was just really impressed by the way the filter moves in this patch and here's another one trance wall two little br too harsh for my ears Beautiful, but just a little bit too much in a certain direction, you know what I mean? Um, this is Rave Hook, so again, you kind of get this detune thing. Rave Hook 2. So that could be cool if you had like some sort of like dark sequence going and you had like. Something like that. That would be cool. Funky touch. Ordinary. Almost like a slap back delay on that. Ordinary too. Well, you can hear how like kind of out that is. Trance fly. Trance fly two. Pretty good reverb type sound. Techno house. Wow. Pretty out of tune. Very crazy. Cross mod. Ooh, that's actually very cool. The little description here says FM like. I need to remember this one. This is a very cool digital, almost like Casio. Cool, totally different type of sound. Crossbod 2. Crossbod 3. Whoa, that delay. I wonder if you can, I'll have to figure that out when it comes to routing the effects with this. I was under the impression that all, both, all four partials and two tones have to run through the same effects, but it almost sounds like the Tyne is running through a very like sort of gated delay sound. But then there's like the analog or the subtractive synth stuff is still underneath.
Really neat. SQ ring mod. Rezo. To me, definitely kind of giving away the digitalness there. House five. Chords. <laughs> the out of two ones make my right eye twitch. Yeah, they do. I'm surprised that like their version of making things sound analog is just to take them out of tune um ba at vcf1 oh that one's pretty nasty Almost use that for like a drum and bass type thing. That, that gets dark. that digital grittiness on there it's really cool it's almost like they put an effect on it but i think it's just the low res nature of the synth pwm rotor smoothie big fan at vt vca i'm surprised how well this thing does like trancy type sounds And it does remind me of the Insonic SQ80, that sort of character. All right, Ravehorn. Sorry, Vulture Mom. Terrible. <laughs> uh, moving on here.
crazy how much resonance is on that. Interesting, the uh, left to right thing going on here if you're listening in headphones. Oh, I see. It's like left to right. So as I after touch here, check this out. So if you're not listening on headphones, watch this again when you are, because you'll hear a major difference there. Little percussion-y type stuff. You can see that's controlling the, the um, pulse width modulation. Oh, kind of for RP type stuff. Actually, it's pretty epic reverb sound. Pretty good. Moving on to Stereo Arp. What's interesting to me is a lot of these sounds in this bank in particular remind me of the, Ju um, the JP-8000, but they sound really good <laughs> as compared to the JP-8000 in my opinion. I know we have some JP-8000 fans out there and don't get me wrong, like, I think it's one of the best synths ever made for its time, but it doesn't give me the thing that it seems to give other people, so I'm not trying to be shit-talking. I'm sure some people are listening to this synth and being like, it sounds dark and gritty and dirty, why would you like that? A lot of these sounds in here would be very useful for. Lots of just sort of like bread and butter type sounds, which you don't always get with the 80s digital stuff. They do so much movement because it was the first time they had like wavetables and shit. Like the Dark Train era, yeah, definitely. I really like this one, it's, it's like cinematic. Really uh, deep, too. That one made my dog come up and come over to me. That's awesome. I'll take the D50 and the 8080 personally, yeah. Um, I think the week after we covered the JP8000 for the last time, um, Florian over at Bad Gear did the 8080, and the difference in like the metal construction is huge. Nice little 
that type of sound. Anyway, so we've run through the analog banks, but I wanted to also sort of as a bonus, uh, check out some of the pads in here too. So the question would be, what do you guys think? Do you think it's successfully taken the D50 into the analog era or area? I should say not era. <laughs> um, I don't know what you guys think. Uh, drop it in the chat. Uh, I'm going to drink. I haven't drank at all this stream. Totally forgot. It's been an hour. How's everybody doing, by the way? It's going to be the new year by the time I see you guys next time. So now we're moving into the pads category. Also, guys... Um, I think by the time I see you, I'll have a new video up on the channel where I go and break down what I think about the modern synth market. So I collect vintage synths because that's the type of shit I like. Uh, I think it's really cool to go back in time and see what these pieces of history sound like. That's a very captivating thing for me, but I understand why you wouldn't want to get vintage synths. And there's a lot of, you know, if you ever compare like a vintage synth, like a Korg Monopoly that goes for $2,500 versus a Behringer Monopoly, which goes for, I'm guessing like six to $800 plus has MIDI plus doesn't have a lot of the issues the old stuff does. Uh, of course, a lot of the times you're going to go for the modern things, but I can't help but still have this little appreciation for, you know, a piece of instrument that was made at a time where it was like, this was the best it could be. And that's what the Roland D50 exemplifies for me. It's like, this was Roland's best attempt at making something. Um, but anyway, so on the channel on the first, so New Year's Day, I'm dropping a video, it's like 20 minutes long. I broke it up into 20 different chapters actually discussing the perfect synth for you out there if you wanna buy a modern synth and what I think right now is captivating in the market. So that's gonna be super cool. Juan, welcome to the stream. Greetings from Uruguay, how's it going? Well, welcome. So now we're gonna be checking out some of the pads in the H card here. So this one's called Milky Way. I'm a slut for pads, and I also think it's what digital synths do best. So we'll see what's going on. Oh my God, give me that shit all day long. This one's great. <laughs> and bass are my favorite perhaps yeah i'm actually such a pad slut that i sort of forgot to buy mono synths for a while so i've got this like ms20 and the sh2 behind me but those are actually the first like i've got otherwise 20 big ass poly synths in this room that just seems to be what i'm into repeater Awesome. Crystal Sweep. Kind of reminds me of the Iceman patch from the JD eight hundred. It 
it must have been so much fun to make this patch you know that's where i start to feel you know when it came to like the analog stuff the d50 doesn't quite deliver in the same way um as i was hoping it would for this stream but when it comes to like this type of shit it's like oh my god it sounds so good shimmering pad well let's see what it does Yes, sir. CM loop. Wow, that's crazy. It actually sounds a lot like the wave station. I would never have guessed that the D50 could do that sort of wave sequence type sound. There is that one jar patch. So I don't know which one that is off the top of my head, Sebastian. So if you can find it, I will find it. <laughs> OBX fat. I think this is a copy of the one before. Just in this bank. So organ bell synth. The one I was playing uh, right now, that was it, really? That's crazy. It does sound like the wave station, Spaceman of Earth. The industrial like loop. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy. This one's awesome. God damn it, I could just imagine the avatars on Pandora fucking to this, you know? looking forward to that Seb that's so cool I'm really excited to check that out uh creation du mall wow very it's like a wave station but with a resonant filter cool it's amazing how great the d50 can sound How's it going? Mighty Mo fucking Pinto. How are you doing, my brother? Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Really looking forward to catching up with you in 2023, my friend. How the fuck you doing? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is some sick shit right here. Ah, attack pad.
Wow, that one's really, really good. Oh, man. Do some bloopy reggae jams. Could get everything I wanted for Christmas. Had a great persona stream, and I just finished a whole stack of Oreos. Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. So good. Breathy sweep. I love a good breathy. Now, what I don't know is, could you find this pad bank and load it into the Roland Cloud? Because if you could, you could be getting all these really cool sounds and have them just like at your fingertips in your computer. It's called Cape Town Voices. Really cool. Just gorgeous. Chung Kao. That's a lot. <laughs> Concerto. Space Dulcimer. Cosmic Chorus. Chorus too. I just love how well that reverb's still going. I love that there's all this creativity that's possible with the D50. One of the things I don't love about this synth is. It's not the easiest to program just by looking at it. And even the JD-800 is not particularly easy to program compared to something like the Poly-6 that's right here. That might be obvious to everybody except for me. But, you know, I really think that if I can dig in and really learn this thing, that the sound potential with this is just like unparalleled. Weird emulator voices. Very beautiful, like sort of pure swirly type tones. Really, really neat. Jupiter combo. So I know this isn't the analog section here, but to me, it's like this sort of thing just feels like. It has a little bit of that Jupiter 8 type sound that the analog section didn't have. Jupiter strings.
that is one of the most amazing patches I've heard on the Roland D50. Jupiter strings. Oh my God. Like that's so fucking good. Holy shit. Um, wow. Autumn, have a wonderful night. I love you and have a happy new year. Okay. I hope your knee feels better super soon. Okay, homie. Take care. Love you. I'll see you soon. Let's get some scum in the chat for Autumn. Love that motherfucker. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. Play it again. Yeah, so let's uh, go ahead and get in here. It's just incredible. That's one of the best sort of like, if you want that sound, you know, now does it sound exactly like a Jupiter eight? No, this is a digital synthesizer. It's got a lot of effects, but it's also very expressive. You know, the velocity and aftertouch adds so much to it. Uh, absolutely. So really great. That one's one of my favorite mad diva. Interesting. All right, mask strings. Interesting, so if it says ensemble EQ, so if I go to upper and control that, maybe I can control the EQ there. Ah, uh, not so much. <laughs> Metal Horizons. that's possible again it's that very wave station-y type sound that's exactly what i thought too about the uh mad diva patch was that that opera singer from fifth element PF-85 Backdrop. Really, really awesome. Power Synth. Rough Strings. Star Peace Chorus. Oh, wow. Also an extremely useful type of sound. I don't know. I'm loving these. Apparently it has a sequence and an arpeggiator in it, so I think he used that to sequence through wavetables. Really? So when I was reading the manual, there are certain wavetables that are set into a loop, which I think is how they did like the native dance patch. Um, but I didn't actually even realize that an arpeggiator in it because it's not like, 
I don't see it anywhere on the front. You know what I mean? Like I don't see in here anything that, you know, normally on a synth, right? You have a button like right here. It says arpeggiator and you know, you play something and you you press the button and it's arpeggiating. There's nothing like that. So somewhere in there has got to be some deep stuff. Hmm. Really interesting. No, up to 64 banks in memory. Yeah, so 64 patches a card. So if you had one of these D50 patch memory cards from the 80s, you'd be able to get 64 patches on it. So each bank we've been listening to, we're on our third one now, is 64 patches. Um, but if you have the H card, you've got 64 by 64, which is pretty crazy. Talking pad. Let's see. I just love the sound of the D50. 20 button pushes and 2,000 pages later. Yes, that uh, sums up programming with this thing. That was a gorgeous patch. Tangerine. Oh, wait. Thumper strings. Vlonkeist. Gorgeous. Just another example of these beautiful sounds. This is really what the D50 excels at. Wave und Wright. Oh, just, just gorgeous. Oh my God. I like lost myself for a section there. Oh my gosh. Zeit. Nice little organ pad. Keep moving. Nightmare. Uh-oh. That's not a nightmare at all. That's gorgeous sounding. Oh my God. I love that so much. So, so awesome. Samurai. These are some of my favorite patches in here. Dikratstran.
Again, just like super usable sounds. Tangerine. To me, this patch sounds very analog and warm. Just great. Fantasy? Alpha Strings, J106. Definitely uh, got some warmth to it. Wouldn't quite call it a 106 string sound. D50 had a very famous patch on it, the soundtrack patch, but Eric Persing, the sound designer, had actually made a patch in the JX8P, also called Soundtrack, which is a sort of, uh, you know, chorusy, dark pad sound that was used in uh, Mulholland Drive. that out of it for sure yes warm analog tangerine dream sweep loop on c That fucks shit. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the fucking Technodrome theme from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I I, I don't know. I've never actually seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's awesome. <laughs> oh god. Soft release verge. Wow. See, these sounds are just like super fucking warm and thick. Spectral rise. Ooh. Love anything spectral. Can I post a link? Absolutely, sir. I'm not going to be able to check it out right now because my chat is over here, but my computer's way over there, and I can't play it on stream anyways, but it'd be cool to check out later. This one's called... Unfortunately, this one's called Isis. <laughs> what a shame that it sounds amazing. Oh my god, it's like a combination of Fantasia and Soundtrack. Yes, of course, that was the original name, uh, but still, it's just funny. Prophet 10 Strings. That 
one sounds really good. That one with the aftertouch and everything. Just, you know, comparing, uh, let's see. Just really great. This one's called PPG Wave 1. Yeah, give it to me. Just glorious. I mean, I just think the Roland D50 sounds better than everything else from this era. You know, I love some of these other synths like the Poly 6 and the Wave Station, but really, I mean, how do you compete with this? It's just that perfect amount of gritty texture and movement. Yeah, just awesome. Just awesome. Chaos strings. That's a lot. <laughs> Close feel IV. Alpha strings. I think we already heard this one. Yeah. Strings Juno 106. Okay, let's see what this one's like. They're close, but the oscillator sync is off. Still a very cool patch. Uh, moving on to patch five. Oh, come on, don't die on me. Oh, my fifth buttons. There we go. ARP nerve strings. Wow. First time I actually heard any, um, like, voice stealing. Really cool, though. Harps of Strings? Very useful. Symphonic Strings. Okay. Don't fuck me up. All right, symphonic strings, give it to me. Not quite what I needed. And then we've got Mysterial Pad. Very good. Here's what I'll say that's so good about this one. You know, there's like a lot of pads we've been listening to, and we've been listening to this instrument in isolation, right? Like where you're just hearing this, and it sounds great. But if you were actually to put some of these sounds into a track, it's like the Wave Station had this problem. It's like, on its own, the Wave Station's the most impressive sounding synth, period, in my opinion. But when you go to actually make a track, it's like such a chore to try to fit that in somewhere unless it's the basis of the track right but when you hear this one it's gorgeous sounding but it's also like this is gonna fit in That 
that's absolutely going to puzzle piece into a mix really great. Uh, so very excited about that. OBA3 pad. I don't know if it's an Oberheim thing, but... Sounds good. OBX strings. We might have heard this one. Not bad. Okay, Corral. Nice breathy thing. I don't know if I think it's better than the K1. Wow, it's like a vibraphone. Future pad, hit it, me. No, oh, it's great. Marco, how's it going? Can a JD-800, which also uses LA synthesis, read patches from a D-50? Are the waveforms different from a JD-800? Um, I'm not aware that a JD-800 can read patches from a D-50. And the waveforms are different. So that would probably be why it can't. The Roland D-50 uses 8-bit samples. And the JD-800, I believe, uses 16-bit samples. It's hard to figure out exactly some of the info for the JD-800. It's a little bit less well-documented. Um, so sadly, the two synths aren't interchangeable because they have different sound sources. Um, for better or worse, it gives them both sort of, you know, whatever. And I've got a JD-800 just off camera here. And, you know... Getting the PG-1000, which gives you the knobs and faders that you're missing on the D-50, I have to say there is still something about the JD-800 in terms of how the instrument feels. It feels really good, and it's all laid out really well. The throw range of the knobs is longer, or of the faders is longer, which is nice. Um, but as far as the sound goes, I have to say I'm kind of more of a D-50 fan. Um... They both sound good for different things, but there's just something gorgeous about the Roland D50. This one's called LX Synth. Hope, hopefully I answered your question, Marco. Let me know if I did. really cool and then we've got an init patch with nothing and then i think i could just uh change the pcm here to why i hear nothing i don't know seems like that's there accidentally at the end So there you have it. That is the Roland JD, I'm sorry, Roland D50 with the HyperCard H70 here. So one more time real quick here. The HCard 750 memory card. I want to make sure I showed it off one more time. So in my opinion, every Roland D50 owner should get one of these. This is awesome. If nothing else, just to expand the number of patches you have. After we've taken them for a trial run tonight, I have to say 
this is like such a great value. I know it's sort of expensive. $200 is a lot to spend on any sort of peripheral for a synthesizer, considering you can fucking buy a Kawaii K1 for about 200 bucks. But I think the capacity of actually, oh my God, let me get this back in here, of actually getting this uh, to use with your synthesizer is just so cool. The patches are great. We only covered three of the 12 preloaded banks that this thing comes with. I picked the three that I was most interested in, which would be the analog stuff, which I would give it at like a B minus C, C rating on. I mean, it doesn't quite get there, but it did have a lot of really useful bread and butter type sounds. Um, but it's definitely the pads bank is where the shinizzle was at, in my opinion. So really a lot of fun. Um, hey, Marco, definitely happy to uh, have you here. So this is Scum Night. We do it every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. I don't know what time it is where you're at, but this time is when we do it. And I'm always checking out something different with vintage synthesizers, sometimes new stuff. Um, next week, we're going to be checking out the Korg DSS-1, which might be the greatest sampler from the 80s. It's basically got a Korg DW-8000 built into it. Really interesting instrument. Really excited to check it out. Making music with floppy disks in 2023 is going to be quite something. Um, so that's really great. It's also going to be the new year by the next time I see you guys. So if I haven't seen you guys personally, I want to extend a huge thank you guys for making Scum Night what it is. I really appreciate your support of Vulture Culture. You guys are awesome. Thank you very, very much. And I hope you have a happy 2023. I'll be back next week with the Korg DSS-1. And make sure to check out my new video dropping on Sunday. That's New Year's Day. Talking about what the best synthesizers to buy in 2023 are going into it. I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful night, a great week. And I can't wait to see you next Wednesday at 9. Love and light, bitches.